Hey, how's it going everyone? In this video, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to use the Mitsubishi Mnet converter tool to extract data from an existing Mitsubishi central controller. In our case today, we have this GB50A controller here at one of the locations that I'm working in. And you're going to need this tool which you can order from the link I'll post below in the description. But basically this tool will allow you to convert the Mnet signal from the Mitsubishi to a USB signal which your computer can read. And then you can use the Mitsubishi maintenance tool which I'll post a link down below to basically import the data and interpret the data. When you open the cover you'll see the Mnet connection right here. There will be two leads on the converter which you want to connect to the appropriate connection which you can see down below here. I'll go ahead and post a picture of this so that way it will be more clear. Make sure the controller is live and powered up. You'll connect the two leads and the USB and it uses a USB-B connector which is your printer cable and you'll plug that into your computer. Okay, so once you've connected to your computer, you want to go ahead and verify the connection by going through your start menu and then go ahead and type in device manager. Once you open that, you want to verify that um, the USB is showing up uh, as one of the COM ports here. In this case, it is coming up as COM7, so that's to verify that we have communication between the device and um, my workstation here. Next you want to go ahead and open up the Mitsubishi maintenance tool which you can see right here. Go ahead and double click on that and once this tool opens up it's going to prompt you with a few initial settings. So we'll leave this here as disable auto scaling. With the next one here you can see just go ahead and select the units that you're working with in your country. I'm here in the United States so we use standard units here. So we'll go ahead, save that, and then here, this um, next screen should give you different options on how to connect to the central controller. Um, there's various ways you can do that. Um, today, I'm, as I'm making this video, we're using the Mnet converter, so we'll go ahead and be sure that it auto-populates here. If not, you want to make sure you select this. And then with this drop down menu, you, you want to select the correct model of your Mnet converter, which in my case, I'm using this model. And then here, if you have, like I said, multiple USB devices connected, you want to be sure you select the correct COM port that the Mnet converter is connected to. So once you've done that, go ahead and hit select, and now the tool will go ahead and launch. So with this first pop-up here, as the interface pops up, you want to go ahead and do an auto search. This is going to search the entire Mnet network of all the different Mitsubishi devices. Um, I like to leave it here as a standard search type, and we'll go ahead and do an auto search. And you want to go ahead and let it do its search, uh, depending on how many devices you have connected. It can take as little as a couple of minutes and up to about five to ten minutes. Um, so we'll go ahead and just let it run. I'll probably fast forward this video just to save some time. Okay. All right, so once the uh, tool has done performing the search of your entire network, this is pretty much the main screen of what you're going to be presented with. If you hover over these, um, these are all your different devices. So starting with this TR, this is your central controller information. You can see here I am using the EW50A model controller for this particular location that we are working on today. It will also show you the current version of the firmware that's installed. Always be sure that you're running the most up-to-date firmware. I'll go ahead and post another link to another video down below in the description to show you how to go ahead and do that. But it's always a good practice to make sure that it is up-to-date. Now these other items here, as you can see, which uh, are denoted by the IC uh, abbreviation, this is your actual split system units. So here we're using the uh, 
the VRF units here and I'll go ahead and post a picture of it right here. But as you hover these, uh, it'll actually also highlight down below here. This is pretty much like your um, network riser. So this will show you how all the devices are connected to the central controller. These OC uh, and OS units are, um, and the BC uh, units are pretty much like your outdoor condenser units. So that's showing you where these are all connected here. Okay, so now one cool feature about this uh, uh, tool is you can go ahead and view the current settings of each of these individual uh, VRF units. And in order to do that, you first have to click the operation tab. It'll bring you now to the operation screen, which will allow you to select an individual unit to look at. You cannot multi-select uh, units to go ahead and look at the set points. You can only look at them one by one. Here, as you can see, we have a ver uh, uh, various amount of set points uh, with this device that's already been pre-configured. Um, you can see here it has a temperature set point for its dry uh, mode, its cooling mode. We have the set point there, the heating mode, and for the auto mode. This here would signify um, your cooling. So this is your upper limit for cooling. And then you can see here it's linked to a lower limit, which is your heating set point. And then your setback set points are right here. Over here, you can see it has the fan uh, uh, speed. So these other ones here will have more than just uh, two of these settings here. But I'm just showing you this one, for example. Um, and so we'll go ahead and close out of here and we'll look at a different one. Let's look at number three. So let's see what this one looks like over here. So this one, as you can see, it only has one main set point, a uh, temperature set point. Right now it's on auto mode and the operation that it's on. Uh, and then here you can see the fan speed I was telling you about. So then there's multiple speeds. Uh, and then uh, also to the louver, so the louver is open. Just showing you the uh, the angle at which it's open at. So we'll go ahead and uh, close out of here. Uh, before I do that, if you want to go ahead and change a set point, let's say I want to go ahead and put this to 73. Anything you change here, you notice these blue check boxes on the left hand side, these will actually highlight as you make a change and that denotes that you have made a change to that, that specific property. Uh, if you want to go ahead and save that change onto the control or the actual unit itself, you want to go ahead and hit the transmit button, which is down below right here, and that go ahead and sends this settings to that uh, particular unit. When you're done, push close. Now, one other cool feature about this uh, program is that you can go ahead and generate a report um, a report to basically detail um, the current status of each or all of these units. So in order to do that, you go ahead and click uh, here the monitor button. And then from here, you can go ahead and multi-select all of your units. So in this case, I want to generate a report of everything here that I have. So we can select all of these here, including all of these condensers and everything else we see here. And probably do these ones too. And then you just go ahead and hit confirm and it'll generate a report for you. Okay, and so here's the report that it generated. You can go and expand this window here. And as now as you can see, you have all kinds of different information. You can uh, break it down here by unit. Uh, so it shows you the current address of the unit here. Um, you can also put it in a spreadsheet and you can have just, uh, you can select everything here and here it'll give you all the information here as you can see. It'll give you all of the different uh, thermistor readings and fan speeds and all kinds of stuff here. You can also select here to view um, the refrigerant circuit diagram here and this will show you a pretty cool diagram of uh, your entire network here so this is really nice to look at okay so that's another thing that you can do here as well we'll go ahead and close out of here for now that we don't want to save that
Now, if you want to just monitor just the VRFs, you'll go ahead and select just all of the uh, icons that have the IC. Uh, and here, as you can see, here's a summary of all of my different VRF units here. So, uh, as you can see, most of them are operating except for this uh, unit number four, which is stopping right now. Um, but it is in auto mode. But this is really handy to have, and you can go ahead and save this as a file. You can print it uh, and you can save it as a PDF if you want. Uh, so that way you can have this on your record uh, you know, prior to cutting over a new system. So uh, in any case, uh, I hope you find this information to be very helpful. Um, if you like this content, please be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. Always leave a comment too uh, if you know any information that you can add on to this to help the community out. And with that being said, we'll go ahead and end the video here and we hope you guys have a wonderful day.